Greetings and salutations, y'all. I'm DJ, and welcome to NBA Mostly Uncut. Now, even though despite the fact that we are a few days or about a week and a bit into the offseason, there's a bunch of bombs that have been dropped so far. Obviously, the first big one was Christian Wood to the Mavs. That was a big fleece. Now we got another one. Jeremy Grant is heading to the Portland Trail Blazers. Another fleece, if you ask me. Now, this is Joe Cronin's first kind of big move since he's been appointed to the full-time GM position, considering that he was, uh, what's the word for it, interim. Now, if we're looking at the details of this trade, this was some fine GMing, if you ask me. Now, here's what we're looking at. Jeremy Grant is obviously heading to Portland. The prodigal son returns home for a 2025 first-round pick via Milwaukee, as well as the fact that Detroit and Portland are going to swap their seconds. That's 36 and 46. Alongside, uh, you know, a few other second round picks. And uh, when you look at the talent that the NBA is really filled with now and the fact that, you know, guys like Herb Jones, Trent Whopper went undrafted. There's a lot of guys and there's a lot of talent in the fact that it can't be quantified necessarily in that first round in the first 30. You got a lot of guys that are being able to carve out roles here. And even, uh, even going beyond that. But regardless... We're at a point in time where just the fact that you can get into the league and you're getting drafted really gives you a chance to carve out a role. I'm going to say that a lot because Jeremy Grant is definitely going to be able to carve out a role here. When you look at the Portland Trailblazers in the past, what's been like their main thing they're missing? You know, obviously you have solid guard play, Damian Lillard, top 75 player, DJ uh, McCollum, constant bucket getter, but they haven't really had a wing who's able to defend as well as be a super big threat on the offensive end. You guys have guys like Mo Harkless and Al Farouk Amino who really helped to anchor the Portland Trail Blazers when they had decent defense. But Jeremy Grant built different. Now this is an Olympian. This is a guy who's been a borderline All Star in the past couple of years. You know he's played it for twenty and ten in a night here and there, but. Coming into this situation, I think that could be something he can consistently do. As of right now, might be the second or third option because obviously you got this guy right here, Damian Lillard, as well as the young buck coming up, Anthony Simons. Well, let's say, just let me say, man. Oh, let me angle that right. That dude's looking nice in that jersey. I don't know if he's actually going to wear 12, but that's just the first one that come up when I Googled it. Now, when it comes to kind of grading trades, we live in an era where it's never really you just go your separate ways. It's always who got the better end of the stick here. And quite frankly, when you look at Jeremy Grant, he's a guy that doesn't necessarily scream multiple first round picks and like huge amounts of assets. I'm not saying that's what he's worth, but the fact that you're trading one first and be it look right there. That's a guy that's going to be on that team past 2025. Believe me. So I don't know how very valuable that pick's going to be. Obviously, you got like the few seconds. You could find some nice gems, but there aren't really any picks here that are going to help move the needle in terms of really helping upstart Pistons rebuild that they're currently in right now. What this does do for Detroit, though, gives them $43 million in cap space. Now, I'm not saying they're going to sign a Bradley Beal, Zach Levine, any of those big fish, but what you could potentially do is get some of those nice veterans who are still in their prime. Can't really think of any off the top of my head, but you know, those guys that could potentially be there for the long or for the tail end of your rebuild, but as well as maybe you're gonna be able to have some nice money to pay your young guys. You know, we got Isaiah Stewart, Beef Stew, Sadiq Bay, one of the nice young sharpshooters in the league right now, and Marvin Bagley, who's the guy that let's face it. He could average 20 and 10 next year, and everybody's still going to call him a bust just considering who he got drafted between. But he has a chance to, I think, really carve out a role. I won't say upstart his career and be that generational talent a lot of people expect when you're drafted that high with the second overall pick. But with the departure of Jeremy Grant, he'll definitely get a chance. Even if Detroit were to go with a guy like Keegan Murray, one of those bigger dudes who has the ability to play the four, I think Marvin Bagley's still going to get some chance to get into the rotation at that position, whether that, or even as, you know, a little smaller five, because he is a bit on the lighter end of the front court position. Now, 
looking at the Portland Trail Blazers. Now, you don't know me, or well, you probably don't, but I'm a Bucks fan by heart, but there's a team I cheer for in the West, whether it be because geographically they're technically the closest to me, or just the fact that I love Portland as a city. I mess with the Portland Trail Blazers. You got Damian Lillard, obviously. Franchise cornerstone, obviously, unarguably, the best player in your franchise's history. Right? Kai Drexler. Kai Drexler, cool and all, but he's not Dame Dalla. You got a guy like Anthony Simons who's really starting to come in his own. Trenton Watford's a guy who, could, who I think is really going to benefit from here. He really came into the league wide-eyed and just very... We'll call it sporadic. You know, he got in where he fit in and he was able to just really make the most out of this kind of developmental year that the Portland Trailblazers have with the young guys aside from that. Because you're little. Now, when it came to the time he did play before he was injured, he was getting in where he fit in. You know, he had little nice spurts here and there, but obviously the injury kind of derailed all that. This is another guy I think can really learn from an established veteran like Jeremy Grant. Even despite the fact that he is a veteran, he's still 28, so he's still, you know, in the midst of his prime. So he's got a nice few years ahead of him, and we'll see what this... I don't know if this is your big three, but we'll see what this nice group's able to do. Aside from that, though, Josh Hart. You know, a guy that I think was really just thrown in more in regards to matching the salary when it came to uh, making that trade, whether it really was for that trade. I don't know, but he was a nice surprise when it came to, like, trade deadline moves that happened. I think if you were to quantify it, he was definitely one of the better ones in terms of how they perform with their new teams. He was like really balling like a solid option. And with that, in addition to his already pretty elite, I will say, rebounding skills at the guard position, whew, Portland, I think, is going to be a fun team to watch next year. They're going to be able to switch a lot of things outside of just having Damian Lillard and Anthony Simons with uh, Josh Hart, Fender Wofford, Jeremy Grant, Mazir Little, I think that could potentially be not an elite defensive unit, but pretty solid if you ask me. Now, when it comes to a guy like Yusuf Nurkic, he's obviously a free agent, in my opinion. I believe the Portland Trail Blazers are potentially a sleeper team to get DeAndre Aiden. Now, we all know what's happening there, you know. Game 7 meltdown, didn't want to go back in, it's internal. DeAndre Aiden has a chance to play with one of the greatest point guards, aside from CP3, obviously. But Damian Lillard, when it comes to getting offense, that's all the man's about. And DeAndre Aiden, I think, really has a chance to anchor this defensive unit and really has a chance to carve out, you know, a super solid role where he cannot just be the kind of in-the-wings guy. Obviously, he's in your front court. He's obviously one of the faces, but... With him being able to come here, he definitely slots in that second option, I think. Now, when it comes to Jeremy Grant, it's well documented that the reason he did go to Detroit initially was because he wanted to be that dude. But when it comes to winning, there's no winning without sacrifice. You know, whether it's Ray Allen just constantly spotting up, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, you know, playing through when he almost fucking snapped his leg. You know, whatever it be. Players have to sacrifice, and Jeremy Grant is looking like he's going to make that sacrifice to not necessarily be the guy, be the guy's guy. Looking towards the season, I do, I will say though, this isn't necessarily a big, big needle mover when you look at this move independently. We look at the West, what's going to happen next year. I mean, the Nuggets are hopefully going to get healthy. The Clippers are going to be back healthy. All the other teams are already getting that much better going to be a tough year that being said i think if they were to do one more big move even then when you look at this roster right now if they were to bring back people they have you know yusuf nurkic comes back this is a team that i think fights definitely for a play-in spot but could also see them fighting for that on the cusp of the six spot you know what i'm saying but regardless this has been nba mostly uncut hope you guys enjoy the draft tomorrow and i hope you enjoy the rest of your day see ya